So for this project, I wanted to create a two-story tiny house on a really small floor plan. And the architectural approach to this design was basically like stacked blocks. I was trying to use an architectural concept called solid and void, where you have one big monolithic block and then you start chipping away elements. So because it's two stories on such a small floor plan, the issue is that it could look very tall and thin when seen from the outside. So I needed to work externally on trying to create the proportions that would make it look balanced and not just a skinny tall box. So what I've done is used two different materials. The top part is render and the bottom part is brick, but they're a similar color, so they work together. But you've got this heavier look at the base and a smooth finish on top. And this is an idea borrowed from classical architecture, which is a technique called rustication that was popular in the Renaissance, where you get a more textured base level to create a heavier look, and then you get a smoother, more refined look further up to almost create a narrative of hierarchy as your gaze moves upwards. And then because of the render being a little more flexible in terms of how it can meet the junction with the brick, I've extruded it slightly so that it sits slightly proud of the brick and the two elements sort of slot together. And what that does is it breaks up the dividing line that you would get from it being two stories and two materials. And instead, it brings the whole volume down to stop having that really tall look. And then by cutting away elements of the block, you get these little moments of flat roof area which create opportunities within the plan. And you also get this little covered entrance area. So these are the elevations and you can see that I've used a mono pitch for the roof. And that's again just to break up the blocky feel. So I'm going blocky and then reducing the blockiness by cutting bits away and by pitching the roof. And it just starts to create a rhythm as you move around the building. And you start to get what's called a language. You start to see some repetition in the shapes you're seeing, like the smooth, tall, thin projecting elements, the recessed shadowy areas, and the stacked planes of this smooth horizontal upper layer over the lower brick layer. It becomes quite sculptural, and the windows fit in with that sculptural language by almost being punched through these smooth expanses or being sort of a sort of cutaway through the brickwork and butting up underneath the rendered projections or just sitting comfortably on top of these flat roof parts. So you come into the building at this entrance door here underneath the covered entrance area and you immediately get a view straight through the building directly out to whatever the view is beyond. And the result of that is that it creates a really open and light feel within the space. It's the sort of technique that's used to make an area feel bigger and make you feel less like you've stepped away from the outside and gone into a dark little space. It makes you feel like you're still kind of outside, so it creates a sort of transition. And because it's such a small floor plan, I wanted to create separate areas because you couldn't really create different rooms in an area this small without it becoming very, very pokey and small. So it really needs to be open plan, but I think there's still real value in creating different areas for living. So this is the kitchen dining area, and you can see this is the living area. But just using a timber slatted screen here to break up those areas from each other just allows, again, transition between spaces without any loss of light and without any loss of views. And it's just a technique to really enhance your experience of this living space. So you can imagine sitting here in the evening, this becomes your cozy living area and you don't have to think about whatever's going on back there in the kitchen. It separates this area off. And likewise, when you're in the kitchen, you're having breakfast or dinner, uh, you're not sitting in your living room to do that. You're sitting in a dedicated space. And then to save floor area, I've used this little space of the stair in multiple ways. You'll see that there's a recessed area which is acting as a sort of coffee table underneath the wall that could have a TV over it. And that just means that you're not having to put something on the floor and use up that precious floor space. I'm also trying to create a very sort of solid sculptural look to the building and so I want the walls to be as flush as possible in keeping with the architecture of the exterior. And so I've used flush door frames and what this does is it stops this feeling like this is just a little temporary partition wall. 
It's supposed to create weight to this area and to create a sort of monolithic feel. And what it also does is it tries to conceal this door to the bathroom a bit because otherwise this just becomes a walkway to the bathroom and your living space is essentially in a kind of corridor. So it's just trying to reduce that feeling as much as possible to keep this as if this is one dedicated enclosed space. So when you come into the bathroom, this is where you transition to a different material area. And it's almost like stepping outside again because you have all the exposed brickwork, the same brickwork that you have on the outside, and you would have that instead of tiles. That would be your finished material in here, which is quite a nice sort of courtyard garden feel. And then also because there's a bit of flat roof above there, I've just created an entirely glass roof light above it. So again, you get that feeling that you've just stepped outside and you've got a hidden courtyard garden, which is actually your bathroom. And the shelf up high with some plants just enhances that. And it's a really nice opportunity to add some greenery into the building without taking up any floor space and just creates that little garden feel as well. And then again, another use for the space under the stairs is that there's the little utility space. So it's separate from the kitchen where it often ends up and that again just makes the whole configuration feel a bit more comfortable and like a normal sized house. And so in keeping with this monolithic feel, I've put a door here at the bottom of the stairs just to block it off visually from this living space and to again create separations in the usable areas despite it being a tiny house. So. This is obviously not something that could happen in a standard building because you need space at the bottom of the stairs, but it's the equivalent of a loft hatch which hides loft stairs behind it that lead up to a single room above. And it provides a little bit of useful wall space to hang some coats. So you go up the stairs and the first thing you notice when you come into this bedroom is the sloped ceiling. And that's because of the mono pitch roof that was used to break up the blocky feel of the architecture but it also serves a purpose internally to create a little bit of character to this room. And it creates a level of intimacy, having the ceiling come low down over here, where it's going to be just above head height, with a little bench here, looking straight out of a window. This creates a real coziness and intimacy. But when it runs up tall over this side, that's where you don't feel like you're trapped in this little tiny space. You've got this really nice, lofty, airy feel and with some dramatic views out of the windows. So the sloping ceiling is really dual purpose and creates two different feelings within one space. And then looking at the floor plan, because we've used a style of architecture which is about chipping away a block as a sort of solid and void effect, what you end up with is these little extra spaces, which I've deliberately not put windows in and not used as part of the main floor plan because externally it needs to look solid and to look heavy. And so internally, these become your storage spaces. And there's a really good bit of storage in there with some real height. So that means you get a final floor plan, which is even and rectangular, and you've not got any freestanding storage cluttering up that floor plan. It's all concealed, it's all tucked away and integrated, but it's a really good bit of storage space for such a small house. And you've even got a balcony with double sliding doors which go out onto this little bit of flat roof and you have some, can have some planting out there and it creates that really nice threshold between the outside and the inside from your bed where you get that little bit of privacy from having planting just outside your room but you can also go straight outside from your bedroom. And I've used shutters in all of these windows that are again frameless because I want this to feel like a completely smooth block with smooth walls and a finished sculptural look to the whole building. So having a smooth flush finish to these shutters just finishes that off and you get a very calm, very minimal interior finish. So that's it. I hope you like it and don't forget to subscribe to keep catching these tiny architecture designs and let me know in the comments what you like and what you want to see more of.